Hello students, in this video we'll discuss consistent and inconsistent systems and row operations for matrices. So let's suppose that we're given a system A11 X1 all the way down to A1 and Xn is equal to B1 all the way down to A M1 x1 plus a m n x n is equal to b m. Okay, so let's think about this for a second over here. So we could do a couple a couple observations to make about this over here. The first observation is that we have n variables over here. I have x1 through x n, so I have n variables in our problem, and we have b1, b2, b3, and we have m equations. So we have n variables and m equations, right? And so what we can do, that's, that's always an important observation to keep in the back of our mind. And so let's associate to this system an augmented matrix. What we're going to do is we're going to associate to this. What we're going to do is we're just going to, the augmented matrix just sort of forgets about the variables x1 through xn and just puts, stores all the coefficients into a matrix. So our matrix is going to look like this, a11 all the way down to a1n, am1, a, M, N, and then past the equal sign, we'll put a dotted line and we'll store that, those coefficients B1 through BM over here. So this is called the augmented matrix that corresponds to the system. Okay. Now this is very similar to what you do in synthetic division. In synthetic division, you're dividing polynomials, what do you do? You simply just store the coefficients of the polynomial and you put the root that you're testing in a box and all you do is you just test the coefficients. You don't carry around all the variables any longer. So the augmented matrix is a very similar construction to this over here, right? So this matrix over here is what? This matrix over here has exactly how many rows? It has m rows, m rows, and then n plus 1 columns because the plus 1 is going to correspond to what? Is going to correspond to the right-hand side of the system. When all the Bs are equal to zero, the system is called homogeneous. Okay? Great. All right, excellent. So we, the question is we want to figure out, is this system consistent or inconsistent? So we say, let's call the system over here star. We say that star is consistent if there is a solution. If you can solve, you can find a value s1 through sn that satisfies all of those m equations simultaneously. Okay, and inconsistent if there's no solution, and inconsistent if there's no solution. Okay, great. So let's see examples of systems that are consistent and systems that are inconsistent. Okay, so here's an example of a consistent system. Example, this is a very, we'll do two silly examples, right? So the system x plus 2y is equal to 3, that is two variables, x and y, and m is equal to one equation over here. This is consistent. It is consistent. Okay, I can choose x equals 1 and y equals 1. If x equals 1 and y equals 1, I have a solution to my equation. Therefore, the equation has a solution, so the equation is consistent. It's sort of a simple example, right? Let me give you an example of something that's not consistent. Let's do this over here. Let's look at 2x plus y is equal to 4, and then 2x plus 4y is equal to 7. Okay, let's see why this over here, so what do we have over here? So we have two equations, and we have two variables. So two equations, two unknowns, right? It's possible there could be a unique solution to this. It's possible there could be many solutions. It's possible there's no solution. So this is an example where there's no solution. Why is that? Because if I take the top equation over here, and I multiply the top equation by 2, that's one of my elementary row operations. So I multiply the top equation by 2, what will happen? This is going to be a 2x plus 4y is equal to 8. And the bottom equation is 2x plus 4y is equal to 7. So if both of these equations are true simultaneously, if this is true and this is true, then that says that 8 is equal to 7. That's impossible, right? So this is an inconsistent system. Inconsistent. Okay? So in general, let's think of this sort of semantically. So in general, the fewer equations you have, the more likely you are to have a solution, right? So fewer equations, so morally, fewer equations,
and lots of variables has a good chance to be consistent. So over here, that's sort of illustrated by this example over here. So I had x plus 2y is equal to 3. There was one equation, so there was a few number of equations, and there were two variables. So in some sense, there were more variables than equations. That makes it more likely to be consistent, not necessarily going to be consistent, but it's more likely that that's the case, right? Suppose I gave you an even larger example. If I said the x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 is equal to 1, okay? If I looked at this equation over here, this equation over here is certainly consistent. There's five variables and there's only one equation, right? I could take x1 to be 1, x2 to be 0, x3 to be 0, x4 to be 0, x5 to be 0, that would work. I can take x1 to be 0, x2 to be 0, x3 to be 0, x4 to be 0, x5 to be 0, and that would work. And you can play around with this. There's a tremendous number of solutions to this equation, okay? There's actually a high dimensional number of solutions to this equation we're going to see, okay? Excellent. All right, so now let's talk about the how do we figure out if a system is consistent or not. And so we're, the primary method we're going to use to test if the system is consistent is to use elementary row operations. So what are our elementary row operations? These are operations that will not These are operations that I can do that simplifies the structure of the matrix so I can see if I get consistent results over here. So there are three elementary row operations we can do with matrices. The first elementary row operation is that what you can do is you can interchange two rows. So it can interchange any two rows. Okay? That's just like saying if I have M, M equations over here, if I, put, if I take the third equation and change the second and third equations, well, the, that doesn't change anything, right? So if I just simply just change the order, if I reorder the number of the equations, it won't change anything, right? So if I interchange two rows, that's not going to affect the equations, the solution system at all, okay? Two, we can scale one of the equations, we can scale any row by a non-zero number. Okay? If I took this equation over here and took this equation 2x plus 3 and multiplied it by 2, it would turn into 2x plus 4y is equal to 6. So in other words, if we took this equation over here, for example, and turned it into 2x plus 4y is equal to 6, well, that equation is exactly the same equation as the starting equation if I just divide that equation by 2. So by multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2, I can get back and forth between one, of the, one version of the equation and the other equation. So that won't affect the system at all either. Okay? But that's a very useful mechanism to sort of make the equation look a little bit nicer. And the final row operation over here is, is, the most, is one of the more important ones, is that we can multiply a row, a given row, by a number and add that to another given row and replace the given row with that. So in other words, I'm going to write this semantically. We can do lambda times rho i plus rho j. We can replace rho j with rho j plus lambda times rho i. Okay, so that's just adding a multiple of one row to another row, right? This is adding a multiple of one row to another row. And these three operations are what we're going to use in future videos to test to see if a system is consistent. With these sort of simple examples over here, we're able to sort of bank, use our knowledge from, from ordinary algebra to figure out when the system is consistent, when the system is inconsistent. So we want to think about how we would do this in more general for higher dimensional settings. And to address these questions in higher dimensional settings, we're going to rely on these three elementary row operations to turn our augmented matrix into a simpler form, which we're going to call reduced row echelon form. Thank you very much.